you spoon it in instead of using the grip gun. Yeah, we get to mark the first thing off the list. So we came to Harbor Freight and uh, somebody made a parking spot. <laughs> it's not in the way at all. Ah, uh, found a Piggly Wiggly. So we stopped off at Roll King. Hot chocolate that tastes uh, flavored like Twinkies, cupcakes, snowballs, and ding dongs. I don't like snowballs. I think Dad does. That's impressive. That's really tempting. So we went to Harbor Freight. Finally got Dad to get something that we've needed forever for the bus. A bench vise. I put it on a mount for a trailer hitch so we can use it. So the bus is being lifted a little bit right now. <laughs> I think your jack is maxed out, by the way. By the uh, is it? transmission drain plug. Was no, it's still got more. Don't let go eventually. So we need to make a shorter drill bit. And I'm not the greatest at freehanding these down with a uh, flap disc, but it's only for aluminum. Well, the drill bit worked, which is surprising because, like I said, I freehanded that with a flap disc, but let's see what the There's trans looks be a like. a whole bunch of fuzzy metal on the end of that thing, I guarantee you. But will there be teeth? No, I don't think there's going to be teeth. I haven't driven it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's some. Decently nasty stuff. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Why? You're overflowing your thing. Oh. Not yet. You're about to. <laughs> yeah, the world's slowest freaking oil pan. It doesn't look too bad, though. No, it's not looking on the dipstick. It's, it usually stays pretty clear. Well, the stuff that came out of there looked brand new. Yeah. So we've got some scrap pieces of hose here and we're kind of eyeballing how all of this is going to run now that it's using regular hose. So we got a scrap piece here. This length's pretty good. That one's a little bit short, so I'm going to add probably two inches to it when I cut it the next time. If the top one's on all the way. The top one is on all the way on both ends. So we're just going to get this figured up here so we can see kind of how it's going to go. Um, we had to reclock the bottom one with some new holes. Sage is out right now getting bolts for us so we can get it all in there. But this is how we're doing away with those uh, flex joints that we can't replace. So, it should work pretty good. We've done it before. So we picked up a bigger set of shears. They didn't actually have hose cutters at uh, Harbor Freight today. But, uh, it was a little harder to do one-handed than I thought it was gonna be. It cuts it pretty decent. Oh, I missed it a little bit there. So we've got water starting to go in the cooling system here. We already had a leak back here. One of the new hose clamps has stripped and was uh, leaking. We've got another one here. So we're looking for a new hose clamp for up there. But so far we've got two gallons of distilled water and we're going to start with a little bit of water and then mix the coolant in. So obviously when we find a leak like this that, you know, we're not losing new good coolant. And uh, Jared and or Jacob, depending on who you ask over here, <laughs> is uh, filling the trans. Slowly. Yeah, so new oil filters on the engine. We've got five gallons of oil in it. We drained the trans. It's getting filled back up right now. The diff is drained. Like I'm run out of daylight, so that's probably going to be a tomorrow problem for someone to crawl into there and fill the diff. But fluids are getting ready to go in for the final drive. And uh, there's a little bit better look of the final setup for what we did on the hoses down here. So we have two flex sections, the one here and the one down there. And all the rest, this is all original pieces that we've just had to modify. This is going to put us at 10 gallons when we're done here. This is your, uh... So we've got coolant up in the reservoir. 
and uh, we're gonna pop on the back side of the thermostat loose there to make sure we don't have any air trapped and then we'll keep going. So we popped that new coolant temp sensor out, relieved all the air that was on the back side and we're still pretty full. So that is where that is getting left for the night. When we get it running tomorrow we'll top that off the rest of the way. Um, the transmission fluid, I've been filling that up. Reach back here, dipstick out. So it is just a Oh, that's right at the cold level mark. And uh, it definitely is cold out. So, transmission's good. We will probably check that after the first test drive. We need to start it up so we can check oil in the morning. And I believe Sage is check, under there right now. Check, check the oil dipstick though. We probably gotta put like two more gallons in before we start it, or a gallon and a half. Okay, I'll check that in a minute here. It's kind of a pain to get to on this bus. And then Sage is down there getting the brake relay valve back in. Oh, that's Jacob. Oh, Jacob's down there. Switched. You gave up? No, my back did. Oh. My back said it was time for Jacob to try it. <laughs> Jacob and or Jared? No, Jacob. <laughs> Dad, right there. It's on the ratchet. But yeah, it's making progress today. Oh, that reminds me. Where's the checklist? I got a bunch of stuff to mark off. Oh, it's over there. We threw it. But yeah. Fluids are going in, so that's always a good sign. Brakes are going back together. After that, I think the list gets smaller. Did we get brakes today? Yes. We do, okay, so we did get the brakes today. That could be a tomorrow project. We got the brake relay valve back in. Didn't have enough time to get tested tonight, but we got that done in the morning. I think we knock off the list. We just kind of had a little meeting at the end of the day here looking at what's left. About half the list could probably get knocked out in about two or three hours tomorrow. Uh, most of the bigger, slower stuff got done today. But we should be doing pretty good. All the tools are picked up for the night, and that's what we're going to call it for today.